In this session, we are going to discuss about procalcitonin in pneumonia, sepsis, and septic shock. So first of all, what is procalcitonin? Procalcitonin is a 116 amino acid precursor of calcitonin. Normally, procalcitonin is produced locally in the thyroid gland by parafollicular cells, which are also called C cells. In the absence of systemic inflammation, procalcitonin synthesis is restricted to thyroid C cells and the protein is not released into the blood until it's cleaved into its mature form, which is calcitonin. Thus, serum procalcitonin is typically undetectable in healthy persons. Procalcitonin is also produced in response to bacterial infection and is produced in large quantities by many body tissues, especially the lungs. Source of inflammation other than bacterial infection, such as autoimmune disorders and viral infections do not raise procalcitonin levels. Anti-inflammatory medications such as steroids and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs do not lower procalcitonin levels. Procalcitonin level rise quickly in response to bacterial infection within 2 to 4 hours but may take as long as 6 to 12 hours to reach its peak. It has half-life of about 24 hours. Procalcitonin can be contrasted with C-reactive protein, which is CRP. CRP takes longer to rise, 12 to 24 hours, takes longer to peak, 48 hours, and is not specific to bacterial infection and is influenced by anti-inflammatory medications. Thus, this combination of characteristics makes procalcitonin potentially a very useful specific biomarker for the diagnosis and monitoring of acute bacterial infections. The clinical uses of procalcitonin include, as the FDA has approved procalcitonin assay for initiation or discontinuation of antibiotics in low respiratory tract infections, and discontinuing antibiotics in patients with sepsis. Use outside these two scenarios is discouraged by the FDA. And numerous studies have evaluated procalcitonin-based treatment algorithms in these settings and found them to be safe compared to standard care. This makes procalcitonin a potentially useful tool for the prevention of the emergence of antibiotic-resistant organisms while still ensuring appropriate treatment for serious bacterial infections. Procalcitonin has not been extensively studied in pediatrics, pregnant women, and significantly immune-compromised patients, so procalcitonin has no clinical utility in this group of patients. How do we interpret the test after determining the procalcitonin level? So, false positive results may occur in neonates where procalcitonin is elevated physiologically and in postpartum period, procalcitonin is also elevated physiologically in the immediate postpartum period, severe trauma or burn, major surgery, therapeutic uh, cooling after cardiac arrest, treatment with agents which stimulate cytokines, kidney disease including hemodialysis, acute graft versus host disease, non-septic shock causing decreased organ perfusion and organ infarction. Procalcitonin may also be lower while there is bacterial infection, so false negative results may occur early in infections if low and bacterial infection is suspected repeating procalcitonin level in 6 to 12 hours is recommended in some chronic infections including endocarditis osteomyelitis prosthetic device and graft infections some localized infections including cellulites wound infections intraabdominal abscess Infection due to uh, chlamydophilia pneumonia and mycoplasma pneumonia. Respiratory tract infections with or without sepsis. Uh, there were uh, different studies 
so using procalcitonin level for initiation and discontinuation of antibiotics results in a 30 percent decrease in duration of antibiotics and also there was a significant decrement in the rate of antibiotic initiation and there are different levels of procalcitonin level uh, measured in neogram per ml which we can use to initiate antibiotics in low respiratory tract infections so when the level is uh, less than 0 0.1 neogram per ml bacterial cause of low respiratory tract infection is very unlikely and antibiotics initiation is strongly discouraged when the level is between 0 0.1 to 0 0.25 bacterial etiology is unlikely and antibiotics is discouraged when the level is uh, between 0 0.25 and 0 0.5 bacterial etiology is likely and antibiotics is encouraged when the level is above the 0.5 neogram per ml bacterial cause of low respiratory tract infection is very likely and antibiotics is strongly encouraged procalcitonin shouldn't be evaluated in the context sorry should be evaluated in the context with all findings and the total clinical status and clinical judgment always necessary and it shouldn't be used in isolation to decide whether to initiate antibiotics in patients with suspected bacterial pneumonia when there is a low procalcitonin level and antibiotics not initiated still we suspect bacterial cause we need to repeat the procalcitonin level procalcitonin levels less than 0.25 neogram per ml or a decrement above 80 percent in procalcitonin level from its highest level supports antibiotic discontinuation if the minimal standard duration has been uh, completed and increasing level may signify treatment failure and it needs infectious disease consultation in sepsis we do not use procalcitonin level to decide to start uh, treatment for sepsis or septic shock because these are emergency conditions we should start antibiotics right away and we can use procalcitonin level whether to discontinue antibiotics uh, in sepsis after they fulfill the standard minimal standard duration of treatment and the patient is improving and uh, so use of procalcitonin level to discontinue antibiotics in sepsis results in one to three days uh, without adverse impact on mortality and length of stay or recurrent infections so thank you for watching subscribe and like for more videos